under pressure. Everybody say under pressure. Under pressure. Anybody feel under pressure this morning? <laughs> Brother Dole, you ever been under pressure? <laughs> Praise God. Yes, we feel under pressure. I feel a little bit under pressure here this morning. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we go through pressure inside of pressure on our job. Uh, pressure at school, those of you that are students, my son has uh, gone back to uh, university this year and uh, finishing off his degree, and so I know he's been studying uh, for his final or his midterm exams or something like that, so uh, he's under pressure to get these things done. Uh, sometimes we have different uh, tasks that we are doing, uh, different jobs that we have to do. Uh, sometimes there's pressure inside of our home, family life pressure, and oh, we can go on and on and on and on. You know what? I find it amazing that um, if you have high blood pressure, you take medication for your high blood pressure. If you had diabetes, then uh, you know you take insulin for your diabetes. If you had a broken leg, brother Wally, you put a cast on your broken leg. But many times when we go through mental struggles or mental issues, emotional issues, then we feel that really there's nothing that we can do about it and uh, we suffer in silence and maybe we suffer alone feeling that there's nothing really uh, that we are able to do about it. I think about Jesus inside of the Garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus was there inside of that garden, the Bible says uh, that he was under an a tremendous amount of pressure. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Think about the pressure that he went through as he was there inside of that garden. He knew everything that was about to befall him, everything that he was going to go through, everything that he was going to suffer, and everything that loomed ahead of him. And so at that time, he asked for three of his disciples, would you watch with me for one hour? Could you pray with me for one hour to help me to carry this tremendous load and this tremendous pressure that I'm under? And so uh, he took those three disciples just a little bit further along with them. But uh, you know how the story goes. Their eyes were so heavy and they were so tired that they fell asleep. And so he was left there all alone to enjoy that pressure and to go through it. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that you do not have to go through it alone today. You do not have to go through pressure and struggles alone, but thank God we have a God that is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Bible says he was at all points tempted just like as we are, and yet without sin. Can you say praise the Lord? Are you still with me today? All right. Let's go on to our uh, scripture reading. It's 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 8 and 9. This is one of those rare moments that the Apostle Paul tells us how he really feels. A lot of times we read about what he done, and we read the words that he wrote, but this is one of those rare moments inside of the New Testament where the Apostle Paul actually tells us how he feels. Chapter number, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia? That we were pressed. Everybody say pressed. pressed. Man, we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Notice that. This is the great apostle Paul talking here. He said we were under so much pressure that we were, it was even above measure, it was off the charts. It was even above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. But we have this sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Praise God. We don't trust inside of our own strength, but we trust inside of God's strength. God is the one that is able to raise the dead. Praise God. Paul, a great example of faith and strength. He was evangelizing to the Gentiles. Give you a little bit of context here. Paul the Apostle was not evangelizing to the household of Israel, but he was the evangelist to the Gentiles, to heathenistic people, to broken people. And so here he is saying that we had come up against something that was above measure.
and even beyond strength. Paul the Apostle is no wimp. Paul was shipwrecked three times. Paul had been beaten by the Jews 39 strikes five times. Three times he said, I was beaten with rods. I was shipwrecked three times. I spent a whole day and a whole night adrift inside of the water. I was in perils among my own countrymen, in perils among the heathen, in perils among the... Hey, Paul the Apostle is no wimp. But here he said, I came up against something that was even above measure. Something that was even beyond strength. So much so that we even despaired unto life itself. Sometimes we are dealing with pressure and people do not even realize what we are going through. Pressure builds in silence and we can be at the breaking point sometimes and people who are even around us not even know what we are dealing with and what we are battling with on the inside. And so I want us to go on to our next slide. Here is our title slide. And I want for us to pray together. And let's ask the Lord God to help us this morning as we get inside of his word today. Under pressure. Heavenly Father, we thank you again today, Lord, for the privilege that we have to come inside of your house. God, I'm thankful for each and every one that is here today, Lord God. Thank you for those that are watching on the internet today, dear God. I just pray a special blessing over each and every one, dear God. Open our eyes and our understanding. Open our ears, Lord God. Open our hearts today, Lord God. Touch me, the speaker. Touch the ears and hearts of every listener today, I pray, dear God. Let your word fall upon good ground inside of our hearts and bring forth fruit unto everlasting life. We'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor belong belongs unto you, and we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said one more time. Amen. Can we clap our hands for one more time? Just Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for your word. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. All right, let's go on to our introduction here. Some facts about pressure. They say stress is like a battery. It has a positive side and it has a negative side. There's good stress and there is bad stress. You know what's good stress? When you're planning a wedding. Planning a wedding is stressful, but it's a good stress. You know, there's happiness and there's joy. Very stressful when you're planning a wedding, but it's a good stress. If you're expecting a child, it's stressful, very, very stressful. But you know, it's a good, it's a good stress. You know that that baby is going to bring so much joy and so much happiness inside of your lives. And so, uh, you know, planning or having a baby is stressful, but it's a good stress. If you get a promotion at work, a promotion at work is a good stress. You know, uh, you're going to be stressed with this new job or new promotion and so on, but yet you're excited about taking on new responsibilities and going forward inside of your job. It's a good stress. But then there's also bad stress that we come up against as well, too. We call it a distress. When you're having problems at work and struggles at work, when you're having financial burdens or financial issues, divorce and relationship trouble or family trouble, we can go on and on and on. There are bad stress. And we know that pressure and stress is a, a daily thing that we go through. If the great apostle Paul said that he went through stress, so much so that he even despaired unto life itself, then you and I can admit that sometimes we go through stress as well too, that sometimes seems to be even above our stress. Now, it does not take away from the power of the cross, does not take away from the power of God and from the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, does not take away from the power of the blood, does not mean that you're not going to heaven, but uh, sometimes we'd like to rush the flight, if you understand what I mean. Praise God. Uh, there is something that's called the PSI rating. PSI rating is the pounds per square inch. You know what I'm talking about? When you have a pipe, or you have a hose, uh, there is the PSI rating, pounds per square inch, and that hose is rated for. And uh, you don't want to put in more pressure than what it's rated for, because if you do, then the hose or the pipe can burst. I didn't understand this concept when I was a young boy, and I pumped up my bicycle tire, Brother Enoch. I didn't realize that you could put in too much air, and I pumped it up more than what it was supposed to be able to have. I overinflated it, and as I drove away, pow, 
my tire blew. And that, uh, I remember the old tubes used to be inside the bicycle wheel. And uh, I put too much air in it. And because of it, I, I overdid the pounds per square inch, the PSI. And that tire blew. Brothers and sisters, you and I have a PSI rating as well, too. You and I have a pressure per square inch that we are rated for as well, too. And sometimes it seems like we are going above and we are going beyond that PSI rating. You say, well, you got scripture and verse for it? As a matter of fact, I do. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, Jesus said, He would not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. And so yes, you have a weight load. And yes, you have a PSI rating inside of your life. And sometimes we can admit that we go through things and we go through pressures and we go through struggles and sometimes feels to be just too much. Go on to the second slide if you would. Some more facts about uh, pressure. Sometimes we as Christians, we feel obligated to say that we are okay and say that we are blessed even when we don't feel okay. Or even sometimes we feel, if I don't say that I'm okay, then somehow I'm letting God down. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. We as Christians, uh, you know, sometimes the pressure is even more difficult for us because we always feel that we have to be okay and we have to be good. We have to be fine. Sister said, well, how are you today? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm fine. You know, we always say, but sometimes we're not good. You know, sometimes we are going through struggles. And sometimes we are going through pressure by yet We always feel obligated to say that we are good. We're blessed. We're fine. Sometimes, if I don't say that, then somehow, you know, I might be letting God down. Amen. And uh, you ever notice when somebody asks you how you're doing, it's just a greeting. It's not really a question. How are you? How are you doing? You know, they're not really expecting an answer from you. You know, it's just a greeting, but it's not really. Thanks so much, Kim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Praise God. They say, hi, how are you? How are you doing? And they're not really expecting an answer. You know, it's just a greeting. Praise God. If I ever stopped and I tell you how you're doing, how I'm doing, then, you know, you try and run away from me as fast as you can. Because, I mean, you're dealing with enough problems of your own rather than hearing for all the problems and the struggles that I'm going through as well. Amen. With every blessing, there comes more burdens and there comes more responsibilities. Bible says, to whom much is given, much shall be required. Luke 12 and verse number 48. And so uh, the more blessings that you have, then the more responsibilities that you have. And the more blessings that you have, then sometimes even the more burdens that you will have as well too. Sometimes people that have less will envy those people that have more. But yet they don't really see and understand and realize that with more blessings comes a lot more responsibilities and a lot more burdens as well too. You don't know the burdens that I face and you don't know the responsibilities that I have because of the blessings that the Lord God has given unto me and because of the blessings that I have in my life. You understand what I'm talking about here today? Praise God. And on to the next slide here. Some more facts about pressure. Thank you, Patel. Appreciate it. I'm going to be waterlogged today, boys. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pressure is also a warfare tactic that is used by our enemy as well to defeat us. Pressure is also a warfare tactic that the enemy tries to use. The enemy will try to put pressure on our life as well. The enemy tries to bring lots of pressure inside of our mind. Bible says that it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. Romans 7, verse number 25. And so God wants our mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord God wants to have our mind. But you know something? The enemy also wants to have our mind as well. The enemy also wants to take control of your mind as well too because he knows that the mind is the place where the promises of God and where the word of God is stored. And so the fight is over your mental health and your well-being and how you see yourself and how you see your circumstances because there is a battle for the mind 
It is the place where the promises of God are stored. The mind is also where we store and harbor images. Sometimes it can be horrific images of accidents and tragedies, adversities and dilemmas and uh, circumstances that we have gone through that are lodged there inside of our mind. They're no longer happening inside of our body, but we still have them there inside of our mind as well too. And so the enemy will try to use those things to rob us of our joy and to rob us of our victory, to use those images that are there inside of our mind. The enemy wants to rob you of that peace that says, yes, I have problems, but the Lord God has helped me to keep them inside of perspective. He cannot stop you from being blessed, but he will try to stop you from feeling blessed. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. The enemy cannot stop you from being blessed, but the enemy will try to stop you from feeling blessed. So there is a battle for the mind that is taking place. Take a look at the scripture verse that goes with it. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 11 to 12. Put on all of God's armor. So that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Brothers and sisters, it's a spiritual battle which we are fighting today. It is a spiritual warfare, of course, that we are going through. And so there is a battle that is going on for our mind today. I wish I could tell you that when you started serving the Lord, you'd never have another problem and you'll never have another difficulty. I wish I could tell you that when you start serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll never go through another uh, you know, circumstance, you'll never go through another trial or so on, but the Bible does not say that. There are those that preach this prosperity doctrine that say once you start serving the Lord, when you become a mature Christian, you'll never have another trial and you'll never have another problem. Well, I guess the Apostle Paul wasn't a mature Christian because he still went through problems and he still went through trials. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Can you say praise the Lord? So yes, we are in the middle of a spiritual battle and we are inside of the middle of a spiritual fight. Take a look at the next scripture verse. 2 Corinthians now. Notice we're still in 2 Corinthians here. Chapter number 10, verse 4 to 5. If you're in a battle, then you need to have some weapons. And the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Meaning they are not weapons of the world, but they are mighty. Everybody say mighty. Mighty. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Brothers and sisters, there's some strongholds inside of this service today that we need to pull down. There are some strongholds that are taking place inside of your mind today that need to be brought down today. And the Bible says that the weapons that God has given to us, they are not weapons of the world, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I told you it was a battle of the mind. I prove it to you. Casting down imaginations. Everybody say imaginations. 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 And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise God. Thank God. Yes, we are in the midst of a spiritual battle and a spiritual war, but God has given to us some weapons that we are able to fight with. God has given to us the weapon of prayer. Everybody say prayer. Prayer is a great weapon that we have inside of this battle. Amen. We can pray and go unto the Lord God. And did you understand and know that prayer is a weapon that the Lord God has given unto us? Hey, God did not leave us just by ourselves inside of this spiritual warfare. I wish I could preach on the weapon of prayer for an hour today. Amen. We have worship and praise. Did you know that praise and worship is a great weapon that the Lord God has given to us in our arsenal? We can pray and we can worship God. Maybe you came inside of the service today and you know you weren't feeling so great. Uh, you came inside of the service and maybe your back is aching. Uh, maybe your legs are aching. Maybe you came inside
inside of the service today and you are under a lot of pressure and you're under some struggles or you're going through, but you know something? When you begin to worship the Lord God, when you begin to praise the Lord God, when you forget about your problems and cast them aside and begin to worship the Lord God, something really powerful begins to happen. Something really great begins to happen. Why? Because as we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, he lifts us up as well too. Amen. And so praise and worship is a great weapon that God has given to us inside of this battle. Amen. I wish I could preach on the weapon of praise today for an hour or so, but I don't have the time. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. does not matter what you might be going through today, but you need to worship the Lord and praise the Lord God and give God glory. Amen. We've got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, a great weapon in our arsenal. We have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. Amen. We have all these weapons that the Lord God has given unto us inside of this fight. Why? Because the Bible says casting down imagination. Praise God, imaginations or images that are there inside of our mind, the way that I see things inside of my head may not even be the way that they really are, but sometimes we can be tormented by images and by things that do not even really exist. Sometimes it can get conjured up inside of our head, and today we need to cast it down inside of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be sitting beside somebody here today that is wrestling with something there on the inside. On the outside they appear calm. On the outside they appear like everything is okay. But yet there on the inside there's a fight and there is a battle that is going on inside of their mind. Why? Because the enemy tries, amen, to put those images there inside of our mind. The enemy tries to bring up images there to rob us of our joy and to rob us of our blessings. You understand what I'm talking about? The blessings of God are out there. But I've got images today that are blocking those blessings of God. All I'm seeing right now is the images. I'm not seeing the blessings of God, and I'm not seeing the goodness of God that is out there. Today, those images need to get cast down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times have you laid in bed all night and you tossed and turned? And you struggle with some kind of image or something that is there. A thought maybe that's inside of your mind that is keeping you up all night. My wife is already struggling with the report that she's going to have to do with the first of the month of January. She's already allowing that amen, to go over and over and over inside of her mind. Every first of the month she needs to have a report ready. And that report it has a deadline. And so the first of the month, of course, in January, that day number one is a holiday. So she lost one day right there already. But you know what? They're still going to want her to have that report ready and done, even though January 1st was a holiday. And so I know she's already stressing over that report. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Things that are there inside of our mind. Pressures that are there. Amen. There are certain images that sometimes we are even more susceptible to. And when we're having a moment of joy, the enemy will allow that image to come there inside of our mind to rob us of our joy and to rob us of our victory inside of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the longer you live, the more images you collect inside of your mind as well too. Images that will try to rob you of the blessings of the Lord. Images that are there that are going to try to rob you, amen, of your joy. Or images that are there that are going to try to rob you of what God wants to do inside of your life. That's why the Bible says we need to cast down those images inside of the name of the Lord. And it also says casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that stands up high in your life that exalts itself against what you know about God has to come down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that stands high in your life that exalts itself against what you know about God must come down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. What did Lucifer say? Lucifer said, Isaiah chapter number 14, I will exalt myself and become greater than the Most High. And because of that rebellion, he was cast down to the earth. 
But you know what he tries to do now? He tries to exalt himself above what you know about God inside of your mind. He tries to exalt himself about what you know about the Lord God. You know that God is a healer. You know that God is good. You know that God is a deliverer. You know that God is a way maker. You know that God is merciful. You know that God is true. But the enemy tries to exalt himself above what you know about God. So you forget about the goodness of God. And you forget that God is a way maker. And you forget that God is a deliverer. And you forget that God is a healer. Amen. But the Bible says that we have got to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and take into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Can you clap your hands for me? that are going through a battle and you are going through a struggle. You are going through pressures just like the Apostle Paul said that seem to be above measure, that seem to be above strength. I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is here today to help you to cast down those high things, to help you to cast down those imaginations and those thoughts. Take a look at the next scripture verse. We're still in 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter number 4, verse 7 to 9. But now we have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure that makes it clear that our great power is from God and it's not from we ourselves. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have the Spirit of the Lord God dwelling on the inside of us. Amen. The power does not come from ourselves. Amen. There is not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord God. It's God's Spirit that is there on the inside that gives us the power. So notice what Paul says. We are pressed. Everybody say pressed. We are pressed on every side by troubles. But we are not crushed. <laughs> we are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down. As the Bible says, the enemy goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Paul said, yes, we are hunted down. But we are never abandoned by God. Hey, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you always, even unto the end of the age. Even sometimes maybe we don't feel him the way that we want to. Even sometimes when we go through trials and maybe we don't feel the presence of the Lord God the way that we like to. Amen. Paul said, amen, we are hunted down, but we are never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not Destroy. Amen. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are pressed on every side. Yes, brothers and sisters, we go through pressures, praise God, but we are not crushed. Amen. We will go through perplexities, but we are not driven to despair. The context of the scripture in 2 Corinthians, the Corinthian church wanted for Paul to come back and to visit them again a second time. They were going through issues, and they were going through struggles. There were things that were happening inside of the Corinthian church that they wanted Paul to come back and do a visit again into Corinth again. Paul, we need you to come and help us with these struggles and these trials that we are going through. And Paul the Apostle had to say, no, I cannot come at this time. You don't understand the trouble that we went through when we were in Asia. That it was even above measure. And it was even about strength. So much so that we even despaired unto life itself. Praise God. We are not able to come at this. I'm going to send you a letter. I will write you a letter and I will send you a letter. But we are not able to come at this time. Because we despaired even unto life it's like we've come up against something. Even Paul the Apostle was saying, we are overwhelmed. We are feeling overwhelmed by all of this pressure. Amen. We are feeling overwhelmed by what we are going through right now. And so we are not able to come at this time. Can I drop in something here this morning? Amen. Sometimes we need to realize as well that we have a load limit. And that we have a pressure limit as well. Sometimes we need to understand as well too that our bodies and our minds, amen, there comes a point where there is so much pressure where we even need to say sometimes no. 
no, I'm not able to do it right now. You know what? I'm the type of person I want to do everything. I like to be involved in everything. I wish I could be involved in every single ministry, in every single thing. Every time a missionary comes and does their presentation, hey amen, I want to quit my job and I want to go to that mission field. Praise God. When, uh, you know, uh, um, when the Freedom Outreach come and they do the presentation, Sister Simple, I wish I could just quit my job. I wish I could move to Freedom Outreach and just minister there. I wish I could do it all. I wish I was able to go to Mozambique, quit my job today, and go to Mozambique, Kim. And you know, I would love to get my life over there. I would love to do all these things. There's so many things, yes, that are calling towards us. Amen. But you know, some brothers and sisters, we cannot give ourselves to everything. There is a limit. And there was a little, Paul the Apostle had to learn that as well too. Paul the Apostle came up against some struggles and came up against something that said, hey, we have gone through so much that we even despair unto life itself. Yes, we have this treasure in jars of clay that we understand that the excellency of the power is of God and it's not in we ourselves. Amen. We go through these pressures, but we know that the Lord God, he is able to deliver us from them all. Can you say praise the Lord? Can you clap your hands for the Lord? On to the next slide. Matthew chapter number 6. Verse 25 to 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. If I say don't worry, don't worry. say it like you mean it. Don't, don't worry. worry. <laughs> Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can you or can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Yeah. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God so cares wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So then don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of the unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Praise God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then the Bible says all of these things will be added unto you. Why do we get so anxious about so many things? Why do we worry about so many things and so many troubles? Hey Amen. With anxiety, we got anxiety from family problems. Worry over finances. Worry over health issues. I think I'm going to get cancer. I think I have a sickness inside of my body. I think there's something wrong with me. And all these worries, these images that go through our mind and go through our mind that we worry about. We worry about failures from the past. We worry about sin and guilt and shame. We worry about age, uh, uh, ancient things that happened in the past and issues of faith. Anxiety is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Did you get that? Anxiety is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Amen. The unbelievers, they worry about all of these different things. But he said, your heavenly Father, he knows everything that you have need of. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and all these things, he said, will be added unto you. Take a look at the next scripture. Verse is very, very similar. We read this verse very, very often. 
where Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, everybody say every situation. Pastor Ted, you don't know what I'm going through though, right now. Pastor Ted, you don't know the things that are coming upon me. Pastor Ted, you don't know about the family struggles that we are. Pastor Ted, you don't know about the financial. No, maybe I do not know about everything. But I do know that the Bible says in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Brothers and sisters, in every situation, it does not matter how big it might be. It does not matter how small it might be. It does not matter how great the problem might be. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer. Everybody say prayer. Yeah. Amen. Are you bringing your needs to the Lord in prayer? Are you talking to the Lord God in prayer? What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. The writer of that song, amen, is so gifted and so anointed. Praise God. Yes, we can carry everything to the Lord God in prayer. Amen. With prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God. If I say peace of God. And that peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Praise God. In Christ Jesus. Amen. That peace of God. You know what? It's supernatural peace. It's a peace that the world does not even understand. You can have peace in the midst of your trial. You can have peace in the midst of your storm. You can have peace in the midst of any circumstance today. Why? Because it is the peace of God that passes all understanding. How many times has somebody looked at you and said, I don't understand how you can be so calm. I don't understand how you can be so tranquil inside of the situation that you are going through. But they don't understand that it's the peace of God that transcends all understanding. Amen. It's greater than any peace of man. It's greater than any human peace. But it's God's peace. Amen. That is able to transcend. Praise God. So yes, worry is going to disturb our mind. Worry is going to divide our attention. Worry is going to take away our focus. And it distracts our spirit. But today the Bible says in every situation, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Praise God. All right, two more slides left, and then I'm closing. Next one is trouble is a fact of life. Again, I wish I could tell you that you'll never have another problem or you'll never have another struggle. You'll never have another trial. But we know that trouble cannot always be avoided. And trouble does drain our strength. Praise God. But you know something? Trouble has already been defeated on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that surely he has borne our griefs and he carried our sorrows. When he went to that cross of Calvary, Brother Wally, he carried our griefs and he bore our sorrow. Amen. Thank God it was for the healing of all nations. By his stripes we are healed. Thank God his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness and sin. But did you know that he always, he always as well, he already carried your sorrows and your griefs. That's the pressure and the stress and the things that we go through. He took that upon himself as well too on the cross of Calvary. I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. He said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together tonight, or this afternoon. Amen. I will look at our last slide. Three steps to pressure management. I'm preaching to somebody that's here this morning that you feel like you're going through pressure. You feel like you are going through that struggle that seems to be above strength and seems to be above measure today. 
I want you to know that Jesus Christ, he is able to offer relief on the inside of your life. But first of all, we need to be willing to release it unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like the funny story that we told you about the little man carrying the troubles on his back. Even though he's sitting on the back of that carriage, he's still carrying those troubles and he's still carrying that weight upon his back. Brothers and sisters, we need to release it to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, here it is. God, I don't know how to deal with this. God, I don't know how to be able to endure with these struggles that we are going through. So, Lord Jesus Christ, I'm giving it unto you this morning. Yes, Lord God, there is a situation today that is above my strength that is above even my ability to be able to endure. And so, God, I give it unto you today. And Jesus Christ will send us spiritual renewal. Praise God. Come unto me, he said, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise God. Can we close our eyes and raise our hands together here this morning? Music team is going to come back to the platform here today and help us inside of a song. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul said these words, And the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul said, Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of Christ might rest upon me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Praise God. We're talking about pressure here this morning, brothers and sisters. Hey, the Lord Jesus Christ is here today to bring deliverance inside of your life. The Lord Jesus Christ is here today, amen, to bring deliverance inside of somebody, to touch somebody here this morning that might have came inside of the service and said, it is above measure and it is above strength. But the Lord God is here today, amen, to say my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect inside of your weakness. Would you just close your eyes and let's pray together here today. Praise God. Maybe you might say, Pastor Ted, this message is not for me, but you don't know, amen, about somebody that's standing next to you today that might be going through pressure and might be going through struggles, might be suffering on the inside in silence, and they don't show it on the outside, but yet on the inside they are going through struggles that seem to be off the charts today, that seem to be than what they are able to bear. Praise God. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. Hallelujah. Don't let your hearts be troubled today. He's here inside of this place today to minister unto you. He's here inside of this place today to set you free.